Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today is Wednesday, November 16th, 2022. Uh, we have a quorum present, so I will call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Chittenden Solid Waste District Board of Commissioners. Um, before we begin, I just want to explain that normally this uh, program, this uh, meeting would be televised by Channel 17. They are not here, so that those of us present in the room, in the uh, Williston Town Hall meeting room uh, are all going to be attending via Zoom. But since we're all in the same room, uh, we're going to have some audio challenges and perhaps some other coordination challenges. So ask that you all bear with us. Uh, also, if you cannot hear us, please swing your arms or let us know. Uh, conversely, we may have problems hearing you uh, because we're going to be listening through Sarah's audio. So please speak clearly and slowly and as audibly as possible. Um, and feel free to use the chat feature as well. We'll be, we'll be monitoring the chat. So I hope I was hope everybody understands. It's, uh, there's always something new with our meetings. So, uh, with that, uh, we'll um, begin the meeting. The first item on the agenda is the agenda itself. Are there any requests to change or add anything to the agenda? Uh, yeah, the, um, this is Henry. Um, I'd like to see furniture discussed specifically furniture deconstruction and other business we'll, well we'll do that under other business at um, item number seven henry okay well that's that's last okay yeah uh luckily we don't have two uh potentially not a very uh, lengthy agenda tonight so uh hopefully we'll be able to get to that i know you you often have um a, a hard stop on these meetings We'll do our best to get you uh, get you in there beforehand. Any other requests concerning the agenda? The agenda then the agenda then will be accepted as presented with the addition of furniture discussion uh, under other business item number seven. Next item on the agenda is the public comment period. Are there any members of the public present via Zoom or on the phone who would like to address the board? I can state positively there are no members of the public in this meeting room. There are none online. I'm hearing none via phone. So we will close the public comment period. Move on to item number three, which is the consent agenda consisting of the minutes of the October 26th, 2022 board meeting, program updates, executive director update, and the uh, finance uh, report. Any requests from a commissioner to pull anything? Yes, Bryn. I <clears throat> have a very small minor change in the notes. In the minutes? Uh, yeah, in the minutes. Okay, Sorry. we'll pull the minutes. I actually have one too, since you've, you've asked for it to be pulled. Any other requests to pull an item from the consent agenda? Therefore, I will say that the consent agenda with the exception of the minutes will be approved as presented. Uh, Bryn, can you um, address your concern about the minutes? Sure, so on page two of the minutes, um, section four, 2021 waste diversion and disposal report, um, in kind of right dead center in the middle, um, there's a note that says, <clears throat> Paul Roos also notes that the MSW pounds per capita per day diversion is higher than accepted. And I'm curious if it was supposed to be expected. Uh, I looked at that as well. I was confused. I don't remember exactly what I said. Um, I don't think I would have said higher than expected because I wouldn't normally have thought we had expectation. My solution would be just to strike those three words. Um, which were, if I can find it here, I think higher than accepted. Uh, I think the intent of what I said would be preserved by just removing those three words. Would that, um, do you have a concern with that, Bryn? No, I don't. It, yeah. it, it, to your point, it, it didn't read correctly to me. Yeah, but, but again, I think the gist of what I was driving at, which was that the, uh, the diversion rates were were exceptional um, was really what I was pointing out. And maybe that's the word I used rather than accepted. 
but with that, we could make that correction. Uh, my correction was that at the very beginning of the minutes, just a very minor, uh, the minutes refer to me opening the meeting, actually opening the organizational meeting at 6 p.m. Uh, I believe that's just a carryover of a template. Uh, and if we could remove the word organizational so that the minutes accurately reflect that this was a regular meeting, not an organizational meeting. Any other uh, discussion or requests for the minutes of the October 26th meeting? I believe then we need a motion to accept the minutes as amended. So moved, Heinsberg. Thank you. Do we have a second? Thank you. Williston has seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Minutes are accepted as amended. Next item on the agenda then is the is item number four, the preliminary FY24 budget. Starts on page 14 of your packet. I'll turn the, uh, the meeting over to Sarah to address this item. Thank you. Um, we did um, uh, review this with the Finance Committee uh, this week. And as I think most commissioners are, are aware, but for those who may be new to the district, um, we are required by our charter to, um, uh, the board is to propose a uh, fiscal year budget um, and no later than December 1. And to have that budget be uh, made available for public comment and public hearing and to our member towns. And really the main, the main focus and uh, purpose of that preliminary budget is to um, alert our member towns and cities if there will be any uh, assessments from the district to the towns for the upcoming fiscal year. Many of our cities and towns uh, pass their budgets in um, in March, uh, town meeting day. So this gives them presumably time to um, add any assessments into their budgets if they are necessary. And we are not anticipating um, or proposing any assessments to any of our member towns. And in the memo, you'll see that I wanted to kind of highlight some of the drivers in this particular budget. And um, there were several factors that that led to some double digit uh, increases um, in expenses and um, things that were affecting some revenue. Uh, and also a reminder as well that this is this is preliminary, even though this is the proposed budget for the next fiscal year, it is preliminary. And um, the, the finance committee will be doing their review work starting in January. So we will be coming back to you most likely in March this year, that is the goal, um, with the, um, the final uh, proposed budget that the board will then review and vote on, and then we can get uh, out to do our, our uh, review with the cities and towns. And from there, at that point, we have 45 days to get their uh, approval of the budget. And this year was a particularly tricky budget. And you'll see that there, there is an initial recommendation um, to uh, recover some of the costs, um, the expenses through raising the solid waste management fee. It's, it's a thought, it's a proposal. Um, it is something that we have not done uh, in, in 10 years. Um, this will be the 10th year of keeping it at $27 a ton. Um, you know, many of the costs obviously around us are going up and it, it really is, is a reflection of, um, you know, two years in a row of very high consumer price uh, increases, cost of living increases, healthcare, um, health insurance numbers going up double digits again. And uh, one of the ways that we can recover some of these administrative um, costs is through the soil waste management fee. Um, even with an increase of $2, which is, is a moderate increase, uh, we would still not be the highest um, district as far as the, the soil waste management fee. So, you know, sometimes we are, um, I know we're very sensitive to, to that. This is just one potential option um, to help us kind of recover some of those administrative costs. And uh, there are other, other options that uh, we're working on internally to bring to the finance committee, but I wanted to put that out there that one of the ways that we do have one of the avenues for us is through this, this 
uh, charge on all the trash that is you know, basically disposed of in Coventry. It has this management fee attached to it. Um, so that is you know, the explanation of why we're saying, let's take a look at the solid waste management fee. Um, there will be other items that we can take a look at um, as well. And Nola and I are happy to answer any questions that you may have on, uh, on the proposed budget as presented. Let's go get back to the Zoom. There we are. Ah, now we can see. Okay. Alan. Alan. Yes, and then I'll mute this one. Called for individuals is if we raise the solid waste management fee and then we have to raise it again the next year. And are we believing that the $2 increase will be able to carry us for at least another year or two after? Um, we raise it enough so we don't have to raise it in another year or two. Thank you, Alan. Bryn, your hand is up. Go ahead. Um, did you want to get back down? Okay, or? Bryn, go ahead. Can you hear me? Can we hear you? <laughs> okay, great. Uh, did you want to respond to Alan first? Um, no, let's let's see if they're possibly connected and maybe I can okay. do so my question is uh, if gate um, if the DOC fees are being proposed to be raised as part of this as well, and if so, how much? So um, I'm looking at Josh. I don't believe that we are planning to raise drop-off center fees at this time. Um, so that is not included in this proposed budget, and the. The thought of um, to answer the question is two dollars enough in one for one year, and how long will that carry us? That is a good question. Um, it doesn't get us all the way to what was the initial shortfall. So when we were first looking at the proposed budget uh, before it came to the finance committee, we were about five hundred thousand dollars below um, break even. So Josh and Nola and I did some. Um, some quick review of where we were and put some things together for the finance committee to be able to review. And a $2 increase on the solid waste management fee brings in about another $200,000, I think it was. So that didn't get us all the way. We made some additional cuts and adjustments. Uh, so we are looking at other strategies for you know, how to, to manage the ongoing costs um, you know, particularly in in personnel, and are there other ways to do that other than through raising fees? And I know that we are we do need to be very sensitive to what we're charging our our customers, we're charging the public, um, and making sure that it's reflective of covering our costs, but not also continuing to just to raise uh, different fees that may not be related to the actual users of the of the the uh, services. So. These are some of the conversations we'll be having in more depth at the finance committee. And, we, and as Paul frequently recommends, um, please do attend uh, finance committee meetings and, and listen to what's, what's going on and what's being discussed to really have a, 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 a broader understanding of kind of how the, um, the district operates and, and how the revenues and the expenses are uh, flow through. So it, it helps us this year, Alan, um, and we do have operational reserves. Um, and this was, an, you know, and again, we could not raise the solid waste management fee and we could dip into the operational reserves to cover the shortfall um, and take this next year to do more analysis. Uh, so we do have some options. Um, you know, we know we need to get to the number at that bottom line. And if we did not raise the solid waste management fee, you take that $200,000 off of that bottom line, it, it basically puts us at a break even. Uh, so you know, again, this is all for um, for greater conversation and as a way to show this would be the effect of just a, a two dollar increase um, on you know again a fee that we haven't raised in in a decade. 
I have heard when I go out and talk to uh, select boards, I've heard a few times from different cities and towns, why don't you just raise it a little bit each year <laughs> and not do big jumps? Um, and our response has been, well, if we're able to generate revenue from other resources, it doesn't really make sense necessarily for us to just raise the fees without rationale to raise the fees. Um, so we have, have not raised uh, some of these fees because we have been trying to, again, make, make do in other areas, um, but with the drop-off centers needing a significant subsidy this year, um, it really is centered there. And how, how can we uh, manage manage that. And, and so to make this um, budget not quite as uh, scary, we said, let's let's take a look at the solid waste management fee, propose a raise there, but also over the next month or six weeks, be looking at other options to really tackle the where where the issue is. And where the issue is, is with the heavy subsidy in the drop-off center. So that's that's where the ongoing conversations will be focused over the next few weeks. And that answers some of the questions. Other um, commissioners like to um, ask a question or make an observation? Rick has a question. Rick. Rick. Not a question, just an observation. Um, when I did my front porch forum posts about the, uh, the MRF bond, I heard from exactly two people, both were supportive and both still found a way to be snippy about it when they were being supportive. And one of them rather pointedly asked when the other shoe was going to fall and when rates were going to go up as a result of the MRF. And that led to some, you know, a, a nice little dialogue with her. But I'm just mentioned this because people may be primed to say, oh, well, here we go. We're raising rates because of the MRF. So just, just saying, just putting that out on the table. Yeah, and, and we've heard that also internally from, from folks in, in, in our communication and outreach team saying, you know, essentially, please don't make me have to go explain this. And, you know, and I have been saying to the select boards when I've been meeting with them for the budgets for the past two years that we were doing a drop-up center analysis and, and um, looking at our fee structures there. And in this past um, budget session cycle where I was out um, in the spring, I said, most likely we will be raising fees in fiscal 24, just letting you know. Now that is a very, very tiny, small subset of all of the people who, who are obviously you know, using our, our facilities. Um, so you know, it's, it's not something that um, you know, is, is a total surprise to everyone and yet it will come as a total surprise to everyone. This is where we're, we're wanting to look at, well, what are, are if there are ways or, or a need to raise to raise additional revenue, does it need to come from fees, right? So that's really why I want to look at other costs and, and making sure that when we're looking particularly at the drop-off centers, are the fees that we're charging for the materials that we're managing, just the materials, do those need to go up for any reason? For example, a few years ago, we had to raise the prices on mattresses because our costs to dispose mattresses were raised by the vendor that we were using to manage the mattresses. That was an easy pass through, right? So making sure that all of our fees that we charge, we are very transparent about why we're charging the fee. Um, you know, and I think that sometimes gets a little bit murkier with the solid waste management fee because it's not a direct line item, say, on a customer's you know, bill if, when they come to the drop-off center, nor is it a line item on um, a curbside hauler. When you know you get your bill from your curbside hauler, there's not a, generally a solid waste management fee um, listed on that. It gets spread out over all of the customers and, and haulers will charge however they feel they need to. Um, but Rick, your concern is correct. And we did hear that, say, when are the fees going to go up? And we want to, I think, point to, again, we've been telling people the MRF is going to pay for the MRF, and, and that is how we've structured this project. Um, we did the same, the same focus with, uh, with compost when we were making the changes there. So, yeah, we very much are focused on making sure that there's very little subsidy to the compost facility, and that's, that's the structure and, and the direction. Returning next to the drop-off center with a very significant subsidy. And 
what are some of the, the, the methods and, and the techniques that we can employ to reduce that subsidy if that is what the board wants us to do. Similarly, with the Environmental Depot, it has a very heavy subsidy, and that subsidy has been supported over the years um, by the board as necessary. Um, so for very good reason. So that's why we don't we don't charge residents a fee um, to use the Environmental Depot because it has been determined um, that this is something that the Board of Commissioners feels is very important to continue to make sure is available at no cost to, res uh, to residents. So, so yeah, Rick, you're exactly right that talking about this in the public, that is going, that would be the, the logical um, uh, thought. And we have to do, do a really good job at explaining if there are going to be changes, if we're not going to dip into reserves to cover the shortfall, why, what we're changing and why, and how might it affect people um, in, in the wallet on a weekly basis. Um, so yeah, it's it's certainly a, a tricky and difficult conversation. Uh, I have an observation and then ultimately a question uh, to pose. Um, this discussion has been talking about fees that we charge, but there are other variables that go into putting together this initial crack at a budget. Two of those variables, which we don't control, would be volume estimates of materials that we process, and then also the ACR, the average commodity revenue. Again, something we don't control, but which seriously impacts uh, our, our financial performance. So I would throw it open to Sarah and Josh, if you could just address those two components uh, and what your thought has been in baking those into the this preliminary budget. Yeah, we've been very conservative um, with the estimate for the average commodity revenue for the MRF. Um, it, it's, it is volatile, as I think this group is well aware. And you know we don't want to run um, the risk of being too, um, you know, too. I don't want to say we say that we're conservative, liberal, but just just you know too rosy um, on that because we know that the downside can be pretty dramatic. We are seeing declines in that now, um, and are expected to see declines going for the next six or so months, um, and so. That's why we always budget conservatively. And, and I actually asked Josh to, or maybe twisted his arm to raise it slightly higher than he, he was comfortable with. So we had, he initially had $80 a ton for the ACR and um, I bumped it up to 84. So we're still being conservative, but not, not as dire as I think Josh would have preferred. Uh, but that does obviously affect the, the inbound revenue coming from the MRF. And with, uh, you know, bond payments and loan payments, what we don't have is any fluff in that budget. So that budget is also very tight. And that has come into play. Um, and Leslie brought this up uh, about a year and a half ago, when, you know, when we we're really talking about this and try, starting to dive into it, was how are we going to make sure that the capital needs are going to be able to be met without the MRF um, essentially subsidizing the capital reserves and, and the capital budget, where are we going to recover that and what's the strategy for that? And that was exactly the right question to ask and it's exactly the right question to continue to, to investigate. Um, and that's something where we do have to look at some of these other avenues for um, raising revenue for capital in particular. Um, and where we do that, um, where we can do that from fees, we will, but I, I'm leery of resting too much capital on fees. I, I you know, would prefer to keep that to, what is it costing us to manage these materials? Um, have the fees be as directly related to that actual cost as possible. Again, yes, we can build in um, some uh, internal management costs for those, but are there other ways, other methods that we can satisfy the cost of the people and of the capital and not necessarily uh, kind of put a premium on, on some fees. Uh, so, so yeah, there are, are a number of, of outside our control. Most of our expenses actually are, are a good portion are outside of our, our immediate control. Um, and we are trying to be very conservative, but also trying to look at just different approaches uh, because it's becoming more clear as we go on that things are changing more rapidly than we may as a municipality have the ability to adjust for 
uh, you know, again, the MRF is a good example. When, if, if we were a private facility uh, called a, a merchant MRF, we would be able to adjust our tip fee on a weekly basis, a daily basis, if we needed to. Um, and certainly that does happen on a monthly basis for private facilities. As the average commodity revenue goes up or down, the tip fee goes down or up to compensate, to make sure that that facility is still making the profit margin that they need to make. We don't do that. As a municipality, we strive to maintain, and, and again, we pass a budget with one number in our tip fee, and we, are, we strive to maintain that single tip fee for, throughout the year. That's unusual. Um, and sometimes it helps us, sometimes it hurts us, but in times of volatility, um, it is much more difficult to manage the, the revenue expectations in particular when uh, we do that. Can you briefly address the volume estimates? There are drivers on both sides. We may be heading into a recession, but population is increasing. And my sense is economic activity in Chittenden County is still fairly strong. But It is strong. Um, the the solid waste management fee um, uh, tonnage estimate is slightly down. And we used the um, the model, the SCUMETS model, to generate that um, estimate. It's only down by a few thousand tons fewer than five. So essentially it's flat, but there'll be a slight um, downward turn. Um, generally we do see when they're, and it's, it's kind of a trailing factor, uh, but we do notice um, that in times of recession, that solid generation tends to go down. Uh, we certainly saw that in uh, with COVID, not necessarily residential uh, generation went down significantly, but obviously commercial generation did. Um, so we did we did notice that we are seeing again, you know, construction is still happening. Um, that doesn't carry the same amount of solid management fee revenue that uh, residential or straight commercial institutional um, activity does. So we're but we're looking at essentially flat to slightly down on the solid waste management tons for this year. Thank you. Uh, Alan has a comment, and then we'll go over to Kelton. Um, but we need to mute Sarah, and then you can turn on your comp your. And then we see Leslie. Okay, and then Leslie. So we're going to go Alan, Kelton, and Leslie. Um, we have had in the past discussions about how when we win in the recycling arena, we are going to lose in the trash arena. And I know that in conversations I've had with our select board, um, that has been a, a thing to, to discuss. Um, but the problem now is that the select boards turn over and those people aren't there that we may have talked to four or five years ago. But uh, as we win the recycling game, we're going to lose the volume of trash gain and thereby having to increase uh, our solid waste management fee. And hopefully you can hear me too. And that is our ultimate Thank you. So we were saying, you know, we do want to, to reduce our reliance on the solid waste management fee as a, a stream of revenue, because we the whole goal is to decrease the amount of tons going into the landfill and being disposed. So we do want to be looking for alternate um, streams of revenue to be able to support the services that our um, residents and businesses have come to rely on and expect. And to do that, while we're also lowering our main, you know, one of our main streams of revenue, it is, um, it is a conundrum. <laughs> yeah, just a, a point of, of curiosity. What What's the ACR at now? I know you said you budgeted 84. So I'm just curious what the ACR is now. The ACR is right now at about $51. The average for the year about 106 in that fiscal year. So, so Josh said that the monthly is about $51 right now, the, oh, uh, the current month. Um, the average is uh, for the year, the 12 month, 12 month or, or no, fiscal, year. fiscal year is about $106 a ton. Running 12 month average is about 126 Running 12 month, 126 I think Leslie had um, her hand up and then Henry. Right, Leslie, then Henry. Um, thanks. On the question of the DOC um, cost and slash subsidy, 
Um, this is not the time to discuss it, but I just wanted to put a marker down that when we're in the budget discussion, uh, I think the finance committee uh, will want to hear from the staff uh, regarding any kinds of cost savings or efficiencies you might have identified. Leaving that aside, I don't know if Michelle might have this to hand, but I believe at some point when we were we had our retreat on the future of the DOCs, and this is now what three four years ago. I you know, I, did we ever do a um, a population opinion survey on DOCs where we could, um, you know, plumb whether they think it's um, a, whether the fee structure is a great deal or a fair deal or overpriced or, you know, just to find out what the temperature appetite might be for maybe changing the structure, fee structure, increasing fees. Do we have any survey data that could inform that? That's just a question to staff to consider that. Thank we, you. So we, thank you. Um, we don't have anything recent um, and you're right. The last and we really talked in depth about this was, I believe, 2018. So it has been um, quite some time. So we we don't have anything that would indicate it either way other than ongoing and increasing usage. <laughs> we do know that certain of our DOCs um, have seen some, some slightly increasing um, usage over the, the past couple of years. Was that due to COVID? Was that due to pricing from haulers going up? Uh, we don't have that uh, that scientific uh, data, but that is a, a very good idea, Leslie, to uh, take that temperature and, and see if we can get some insights. Henry, uh, you're muted right now. Henry. Yeah, um, okay, I, I had two, two comments. One sort of related was um, a funding model so you don't lose money. Okay, when you generate less trash, I mean, that's sort of obvious, but I don't know in your business um, what are the funding models that would be. So, right, you know, so right now you profit from more more stuff going to the dump, or we do, or whatever. So, I don't know what you have on an alternative funding model. And, and also, what's, what happens when a town turns down the budget? You, you, you have a rate increase, and the town says no. So um, we, when we go out to have our budget accepted um, by our member towns, we need to have 50% plus one town. So essentially 10 of our members need to approve the budget and then the budget is um, has been authorized and is good to go. We have had towns reject the budget and there's a whole process in our charter um, that they need to follow in order to uh, kind of register that um, rejection, the reasons why, and point to specific areas in the budget that they would request be changed. Um, and so just because one town may reject the budget does not necessarily mean that the board as a whole will take any action based on that one town's rejection. Um, certainly if the majority of the towns reject the budget, then yes, it is not accepted and the board has to prepare either a new budget or to make changes to the budget based on the specific items that the towns identified in the correspondence back to the board to say, this is what we are objecting to and are requesting that you change. So, so no, one, one town's rejection um, does not necessarily mean- No, I, no, fine, I, I got, no, I, I, I hadn't read that part of it or so, I just sort of scanned the documents and it's a, um, it's a better process than GMT has. Um, I'll say that. So, okay, thank you. Rick, your hand is up. Yes, just a very quick correction to what I said earlier. I used the word snippy to refer to a, uh, a communication from a voter, and a better word would be wary. It was a respectful communication, at, but at the same time, some concerns were expressed. Understood. Understood. Other discussion on this budget? Again, I point out that this is just the preliminary. Um, yeah, Kelton, go ahead, and I'll give my final comments. Yeah, I, I would just echo it. I just what he said is I did see that on 
the Wilson front porch form as well. Uh, a lot of comments and it just seems like we're promising no rate increases and then immediately following up promising no rate increases with a rate increase. And um, again, I, I think it's just kind of what I saw and just me as a commissioner, even explaining it to, to people, it's definitely tough. And it almost feels like if we could use our reserves for a year and look at the DOCs and see, you know, see if that, if that's really where we're, you know, where we're leaking the most, how can we, you know, use a reserves for a year and look at, you know, how we can use our DOCs and maybe again, revisit the solid waste management fee as well next year and see, so we're not just doing a, you know, one-time bandaid on a, on a budget that's not going to make it. Um, I just think it's, you know, it's definitely to me, feels like kind of the easy way to is just putting it on a fee that we don't necessarily that, you know, goes out to, the hauling community and then they have to do all the increases to their cut to their customers rather than and then you know the district isn't going back as well and looking at you know raising the you know the trash rates on the doc customers as well um that that's just my my opinion out when i read it um and i definitely echo i did see that on uh, the front porch forum for williston as well this has been an excellent conversation uh, again this is we're just at the beginning of the process I think all of these comments can be taken under advisement. Um, and again, as Leslie, or, oh, sorry, as Sarah already predicted, uh, I was going to say the finance committee meetings are open to all commissioners. It's a great way to get deeply involved in the workings of, of the district and the board. The first meeting to go over the budget is January 4th. If you're interested in attending, I'm sure the schedule is on the website, or you could reach out to Amy, um, I believe, could um, easily send you the, the full schedule of all the weekly uh, budget meetings that will be happening in January uh, and into February. Uh, Bryn, you're muted, Bryn. There you go. Uh, it just takes a minute for me to unclick it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in going to the packet, um, I guess it's page 12 of 18, looking at the warrants, reserves, and cash balance. Um, when we're talking about reserves, just so we're all talking about the same uh reserve line would that be the operating reserves well so that that would be another determination i would say yes it would be the operating reserve if we're looking um, specifically at the doc subsidy um if we wanted to more uh closely kind of parse that out which we could say well exactly which which pieces of the administration um costs are also in under shortfall if they are, then we could take from the solid waste uh, management fee reserve. So it would be either one of those. And currently the balance is, if you haven't looked, it's about $2.75 million in those two right. reserve accounts. Okay. And I'm sure we'll, in the next uh, agenda item, we'll get into discussion about the next stages of our capital projects and use of reserves as well. There further discussion on this preliminary budget. We do need to have a motion and uh, hopefully we will approve this preliminary budget. I see no other hands raised for discussion. Uh, entertain a motion to approve. Hey folks, apologies. I'm going to be able to try and get this set up. Thanks, thanks very much. Uh, we do have a proposed motion, Paul. It is be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners acknowledges the receipt of a preliminary budget to be further developed through the normal budget process. Moved, yes, sir. Thank you, Essex. Do we have a second? Uh, Burlington, second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded the motion to uh, acknowledge receipt of this preliminary budget. Is there further discussion on this motion? Seeing none and hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay and raise your hand. Are there any abstentions? The motion carries. Thank you all very much. The hard work is about to begin. <laughs> uh, the next item on the agenda, item number five, uh, the materials recovery facility bond vote update, kind of a recap of where we've been and where we're going, starts on page 17 of your packet. Um, Sarah, I guess I'll turn it over to you again to, to give us an overview. 
Um, I'm going to let Jen do the overview, but I want to first um, take a little bit of minute or two just to say a, a very heartfelt, sincere, and and just ecstatic thank you to all of the um, the voters in Chittenden County who who went uh, you know kind of the extra mile um, for us who who did support our um, our initiative over thirty thousand. Um, voters in Chittenden County voted on this proposal. Uh, about 82% um, of those folks voted yes. Uh, it, it is a huge show of support for CSWD, for the work that we do, um, for this project, for recycling in Vermont. Um, and I, I'm just so thankful uh, for that support of voters and, and uh, equally now more thankful for the very hard work um, of the CSWD team um, who uh, you know, tirelessly was working um, over this whole summer um, on making sure that people knew about um, our project, particularly once we realized that the ballots would not be able to be mailed and um, really informing as many people as possible on how to access the ballot um, and how to vote and how to make their, their voices heard. And a huge thank you to this board of commissioners for your strong support and for your activities and your actions in getting the word out and in talking with your constituents um, and you know, just always being, again, so supportive of the work that we do as staff, it is so appreciated. And I could not let this opportunity go without you know, making sure that everyone was really um, very aware of just how much we value um, your participation and your activity and your voices and, um, and I thank you. And I'd jump in and say, I, I was remiss. I actually thought about intended to open the meeting with, with that acknowledgement to thank Sarah as well for her vision and leadership uh, in getting us to this point. Um, I don't think much more needs to be said, but it's, it was a smashing success. Thank you, everybody uh, who's involved. Thank you. So, Jen, if I could turn it over to you for some of the nitty gritty details and the highlights of, of the, uh, the project. And you're muted, Jen. Thank you, Sarah. Um, as you said, my team worked tire tirelessly on this initiative. Um, it was an uphill slog because of the situation with the general election ballots being mailed. We are incredibly proud of the fact that almost 25% of the voters um, actually took the time to either request a ballot or vote for it in person on election day. I think that is huge. Um, the list here in the memo uh, shows you what that uh, campaign consisted of. This was a tremendous amount of work um, between the in-person presentations, uh, television interviews and um, op-eds being written and letters to the edit editor, um, some of which you provided, posts on Front Porch Forum, um, the social media posts that that we did um, that then got shared and, and retweeted, um, and then the digital advertisements were um, incredibly effective. I, I, I think we learned a lot about that aspect of the campaign in, in terms of reaching um, the, the our members and, and the voters. Uh, we also did two postcard mailings that reached 107,000 voters and tours at the Merck as well. So that that work started mostly starting in uh, July and ran through early November. Um, so moving forward, the project timeline that's outlined here is that um, the design and permitting is going to be starting immediately. As you know, we've selected the equipment provider, Van Dyke Recycling Solutions, um, and they will be starting to manufacture that equipment. Uh, construction will start to take place in 2023, um, in equipment installation in 2024 with the startup of the facility in 2025. Um, and the financing, just as a reminder, 
We asked the voters for a $22 million of a $26 million project. Uh, we anticipate about a half a million dollars in uh, grant. And then the um, additional funding will come from reserves. And we also hope to apply for EPA grant. Um, I saw the announcement for the, the grant application uh, for the, the federal solid waste infrastructure funding is just been released yesterday on America Recycles Day. So we'll be, um, I believe the, the uh, grants can be up to $5 million. And uh, I believe it was four. They settled on three million. Okay. Um, I haven't looked at it yet, <laughs> but um, we'll be applying for the maximum amount and hope to reduce the amount of money that we have to borrow. Uh, so we're super excited about this. We're, again, um, I'll reiterate that we were really extremely pleased to see such support from our community and reassurance, um, particularly over the last few years of what we've had to go through that our community trusts us and supports what we do. And we're really looking forward to moving forward on this project. Thank you, Jen. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Dan. Dan. Sarah, you'll have to repeat because um, those on Zoom can't hear that, what he's saying. Thank you. Yes, we heard that from, from several communities that folks had already mailed in their ballots, but then went and voted in person for, for our project. Yes. Well, Alan, did you know? Nope. I think we're then ready to move on. Uh, we'll be hearing, of course, more about the progress of this project uh, in the months and year to come. Thank you again, everyone, for an excellent job. Uh, next item on the agenda is executive session for the purpose of discussing contract negotiations. Um, we do have, uh, does the secretary have language to uh, read into the record for moving us into executive session? Can everyone hear me? Um, I move that the Board of Commissioners of the Chittenden Solid Waste District go into executive session to discuss contract negoti negotiations uh, where premature general public knowledge would clearly place the district, its member municipalities, and other public bodies or persons involved at a substantial disadvantage and to permit authorized staff, other invited interested parties, and the Solid Waste District attorney to be present for this session. So moved, Seth Burlington. There are two, um, two, uh, two contracts. Everybody to vote. So it, uh, two contracts, so um, Drop-Off Center in Burlington and Casella uh, Materials Recovery Business. Thank you. So moved, Essex. Thank you, Essex. We have a second. Second, Jericho. Thank you, Williston. It's been moved and seconded that we enter into the executive session for the first purpose of discussing, discussing our contracts. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Say nay. Any abstentions? We'll now move into executive session per the link that Sarah had emailed out to all of the board members. We'll see you over there in, exec in uh, executive session shortly. Okay, we, uh, we are back now. We, have, we do have a quorum present. Back in public session, uh, entertain a motion to exit executive session. So move, Jericho. Thank Sorry. you. Winooski. 
Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that we exit executive session and return to public session. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, aye. say nay. I don't think there are any abstentions. We're back in public session. Uh, we've concluded item number six, executive session for discussion of contracts, contract negotiations. Next item on the agenda is other business. We did have a request to, uh, from uh, Commissioner um, to address furniture deconstruction. He's not uh, uh, here. Henry is not present at the meeting. Um, and I am not certain that it would be necessary to provide additional time as we've been in executive session for well over an hour. Um, I think we can offer to put it on an, a future agenda. Yeah. So we will then, uh, is there any other business to come before the board tonight? Oh, I just want to say, uh, I, I should have said this earlier, kudos to staff for the, especially outreaching communications for the excellent work they did to, to ensure the bond passed and so, so well. So I just, you know, I, I don't think we say enough good things about the staff. So uh, I'm, I'm adding my voice to that. I just, I really am appreciative and I think you guys did a great job. I saw all sorts of communications and um, it was hard to miss. So uh, <laughs> it was great. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Here, here. Yep. Thank you for underscoring that. Um, I, I think our worry would be they're going to hire you out or you're going to be in demand for figuring out how to help other people run their campaigns. Oof, we could write a book. I uh, will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move that, sir. Thank you. We have a second. second Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, to, it's moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The eyes have it. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you all. Good night. Thanksgiving holiday. Thanksgiving. Bye. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.